everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden and welcome to my Show Me Your Garden series. I am going through every USDA zone, well, almost every USDA zone. I didn't get any submissions for zones one and two, which I am not very surprised about. Uh, and I didn't get any submissions for 11, 12, 13, all above there. So I have videos for zones three, through zones 10. And my goal of this series is to show those of you in your zones other gardens that are similar to yours. So you can kind of get an idea of what plants will work well for you, um, what other gardeners are doing in your zone, just a little bit of inspiration. One of the surprises that I found with this uh, with this series is that even myself in zone 9B, I'm getting inspiration from all the other zones, zones three, zones four, zones five, all the way up because all gardeners are different and all gardeners do everything a little bit different. And I can look at something and say, oh, that's gorgeous. I want to do something like that or get an idea of a color combination or something like that. So I am getting so much inspiration for these videos and I just want to thank those of you who submitted. I appreciate it so much. So as the gardens get higher, I ended up getting more and more submissions. So I'm really sorry, I cannot feature everybody, but I am eventually gonna be doing follow-up videos and I saved all your photos, all your questionnaires that you filled out for me um, and all your pictures. So don't worry, I will get it in a video eventually. But today I have some really, really fun gardens to show you all for zone six. So let's get started. So the first zone six gardener I wanted to feature on today's video is from a gardener in the suburbs of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Her name is Lynn and she does have her own YouTube channel called Lynn Purse, YouTube at Lynn Purse. And again, I am going to link all of of the social media channels in the description down below and I'm linking them as I'm filming so I already have zone three's link zone four's link zone five's linked and now I'm going to be linking zone sixes so I will link Z Lynn's YouTube channel I Lynn I loved your video you submitted it is so so good um so Lynn said one piece of advice that she would give to other zone six gardeners is to take advantage of our four seasons we can grow a wide range of plants here and using structures like benches and arbors gives year round interest. And I'll play the video for you all right now, but that is what I noticed in Lynn's video is that every season her garden was gorgeous. So take a look at it right now. Hi everyone, I'm Lynn and this is Pixie. Welcome to our garden in Southwestern Pennsylvania, zone six. We live on a wooded acre with lots of hills and valleys and uh, we grow a lot of different bulbs in the spring uh, a lot of uh, perennials like the columbine here i love iris these are a native iris and then we've got bearded and siberian iris too pretty colorful in may that's the entrance to my circle garden in late may the arbor is covered with complicata single rose and then the other roses come out in june David Austin roses, the clematis, native beard tongue here that lo pollinators love. That's Rose de Recht, which is very fragrant. And all of my roses are growing on their own roots because of our cold winters. The daylilies, the roses, and the lilies all sort of bloom together in June. And then July, it's really daylily season. Got yarrow and helenium that bloom along with that, and even a perennial foxglove that Pixie loves. You can see how wooded the garden is. And we're all surrounded by trees in the back here, and it's very wet at the bottom of the garden, which allows the Annabelle hydrangeas to really flourish. And I've gone from three of them divided into about 20. I garden for the pollinators, so we have lots of butterflies, bees, echinacea is very popular. Here you can see the steep slope of our hillside. And that was the original steps, which were very tricky, so we replaced them with stone along with some stone walls. And now that faces south, and it's pretty glorious in September when all of the rudbeckias bloom. That agastache, our native agastache, is always covered with pollinators and there's lots of tall flocks in there. The garden is very lush, really until the end of the season. 
This is what it looked like when we first moved here. Uh, just an open space and we put up a fence and an arbor and the seasons just sort of roll around uh, from really February till October. So you can see this is uh, late June in July, the Monarda and the grasses, that's tufted hair grass, uh, are blooming. And then this is in September when the gra other grasses start to come out and the tall perennials for the pollinators. It is a pollinator garden certified and this is October. Even in winter, the structure looks great. This structure is in the back of the house when we first got here and inspired me to do my circle garden. So I drove circles on the ground and planted a weeping cherry tree in the center, added an arbor and a paths, and this is how I start every morning, walking through these paths, enjoying the light at different times of day through the seasons. Pixie loves to come with me on my journeys and that uh, hydrangea limelight becomes a star there by the entrance. I prune it like a tree, and even in the fall, its beautiful colors blend in with the autumn leaves. And in the winter, it still has structure and shape, and the snow catches the snow. One last look at the circles from above as they change through the seasons, through the spring, through the summer, and into late, late fall. I hope you enjoyed your visit to our garden. It's good, right? First of all, Pixie is the star of the show. I mean, Lynn, your garden's gorgeous, but Pixie's the star there. The other thing that I noticed that I just, I couldn't believe was your limelight tree. You can't even call that a shrub, that is literally a tree, and I loved I loved how you said you pruned that into a tree shape and it's not even like a lollipop shape. It's an actual tree and I wish I could grow limelights that way here, but they just don't grow that big. So zone envy for me in <laughs> zone nine. Your garden is gorgeous. I love how you focus on all four seasons and I just I just loved your garden. Thank you so much for submitting. Again, I will link Lynn's YouTube channel in the description down below. Next garden is from Alan. Alan lives in Cleveland, Ohio, and he has a beautiful video that he actually has posted on YouTube. He doesn't have much else posted on his YouTube channel, but at least you can go check the full video out. The full video is a little bit too long for this, so I did cut some of it down, but his garden is just it, it is color. It is color upon color upon color. So I had to show it to you all. So let me show you the video right now and I'll talk over it a little bit. There was no talking in this video. So again, Alan is zone six and he lives in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, he says the plants that thrive in his garden are sun patients, which I need to remind myself to try sun patients this year. I've never actually, never actually tried them and they're gorgeous in his garden. Um, he didn't even list a plant that doesn't work in his garden, which tells me that he's got quite the green thumb and can do a lot. The biggest challenge that he faces in his garden is time. There's not enough hours in the day to do all that he'd like to outside and I can completely completely commiserate with that. I I get it, especially this time of year where it gets dark so early. I just feel like there's not enough hours in the day. I think that Alan's best thing that he said though in his questionnaire, when I asked him what piece of advice he, get, he could give to other gardeners in his zone, he said, what I do takes a lot of time, water, and money. People ask me for the easy, cheap, and quick ways, and he says he doesn't know any. So the thing that I loved most about Alan's garden is this looks like his garage area or like a little shed area. He just has so much color just jumping up and over it, and it's beautiful with those clematis. I, I just, and then what are those called? Those are called vertical planters or something like that, but he's just, instead of planting vegetables in those, he's planted uh, some annuals, which just makes it just pop with color. It's really, really beautiful. And then he's got the coleus and some tropicals as well. It's just really pretty. And then you can see even on this side of his house, he's got more sun patients and more climbers, and he's just taking advantage of every possible space he, he has, I think, on his property. And his house, look at this, it's just the prettiest house ever. Alan, 
you are good. You are good with color. Your house is gorgeous. And I bet your neighbors come and enjoy it all the time. So Alan, thank you so much for submitting this. It was a pleasure to see. Okay, I had to add Bethany in to my zone six video because Bethany's garden is gorgeous. She lives in Chicago, Illinois. If you're not familiar with her, she has she has a YouTube channel, but she also has an Instagram channel, which she's more active on, called Chicago Gardener. And the reason why Bethany is so special as a gardener is because she actually doesn't really have like a yard. She has a patio. So all the gardening that she does is balcony patio gardening it's all in containers or it's all in raised beds and what she can do with the space that she has is incredible so you can see bethany's balcony garden again you can't even tell because there's so many plants crammed in there but all of those are in pots all of that is in pots and she lugs the pots up from her garage or basement what does she call it i think it's a garage um and she plants everything in it, and then at the end of the season, she brings it back downstairs. She is a gardener's gardener, for sure. <laughs> so I asked her what plants thrive in her garden. She says she loves zinnias, dahlias, petunias, hydrangeas. She just needs to make sure that her potting soil provides enough nutrients uh, while still being well draining for them to thrive. Because again, she is a container gardener, so she's providing her plants with the nutrients, right? That's, that's the only way these plants are getting nutrients. She also says she grows a lot of veggies, tomatoes, peppers, and cucumbers, and zucchini. Uh, she says she wishes she could grow citrus trees without having to bring them indoors. She has one lemon tree, but if she lived in a warmer zone, she'd have lemon, lime, and grapefruit. And I, know I need to get a grapefruit. I think she was giving me a hard time about not having a grapefruit tree. <laughs> um, so the biggest challenge that Bethany faces in her garden is that it is a deck three stories up. So everything is grown in containers. It's also small. She has two 18 by 19 square foot decks. So she has to narrow down what she wants to use uh, in her limited garden space each year. She also has to deal with carrying everything she needs for the garden upstairs to the decks which is crazy, three flights of stairs. So she said if she could give one piece of advice to other gardeners in zone six, she said, make sure you're choosing plants that can survive our winters, our winters and provide any additional protection you can so you don't lose any of your favorite plants before spring comes. So again, I will link Bethany, I'll link her YouTube and her Instagram down below. Uh, one of the things I love the most about Bethany is her... Um, how do you say this, Bethany? Your face painting, what she does, she does it for fun, but basically she paints her face uh, in the colors of, you know, different color plants, house plants. She's a really big house plant buff too. And she makes the most beautiful pieces of art on her face, on her body. And they're gorgeous and I just cannot stop watching them. And she just released a Dahlia one and it's just <laughs> over Halloween and it's just the most beautiful thing. So watch her for her garden but then also watch her for her art that she does on herself. It is, it's beautiful. Next zone six garden I'll show you all is from Buffalo, New York. And his name is Clark and he has a YouTube channel called The Barefooted Gardener. And he is fantastic on camera. Go ahead and watch. Hi Janie and fellow gardeners in zone six. Uh, today I'm gonna show you around my little garden here in Western New York, uh, zone six A. Let's go. So I just wanted to give you all an idea of what my garden looks like before frost. So this is the entry uh, garden, the first thing you see when you open the gate. So there's different types of elephant ears, which get dug out after frost. And then of course there's hardy bananas, which is the big leafed plant right to the right of the tiki torch. There's also canna lilies, which stay in the ground for the most part, just with a heavy layer of mulch. Here you can see there are some blue flowering agapanthus, but a zone six hardy variety that's called navy blue. Um, there's also um, a young bamboo grove, which I'll talk a little bit more about bamboo um, in the post-frost video, but there's also the cannas, which are just starting to flower against the foundation. Bulbs, you don't need to be as worried about them being right up against your foundation because a bulb shouldn't damage your foundation. There you can see the cannas are, you know, much, much taller later in summer as their flower stalks continue to elongate. Uh, there's also a red Enset banana, 
which is in the left-hand side of the picture. And that plant is fully non-hardy in zone six, seven, and probably eight as well. But uh, they're spectacular. To They're just fine to be dug and replanted every year. I actually think it makes them live longer. In this shot, you can see some different flowers like irises. You can see the agapanthus or aggies are <laughs> going out of bloom. And then there's a little pugster blue tucked in there. Um, also gara and all sorts of different plants. So the way you're going to know that this is in fact a garden in zone six is you can look around at all of the kind of native and deciduous uh, plants have fully dropped their leaves. Um, I like to do kind of a food foresty native and also I love tropical plants being in zone six. So I have all sorts of dwarf palmettos, which this actually has a little seed stalk on it. This video might be really long. I'm going to make it as short as possible. Um, so yeah. I have heavy, heavy clay. And um, so what I'm doing is because I'm on a budget, I'm using all of my neighbor's leaves and mulch and compost that I make myself and all sorts of stuff like that in order to um, improve the soil uh, slowly but surely. Uh, of course, I'm also a certified Aquascape contractor. So I build custom water features um, I could do a whole separate video on that, and actually I have. Um, these right here, I'm actually going to show you the other clump because the fountain's going to be really loud. But these right here are cold hardy banana plants, which I have chopped off um, with my machete. And then I'll just put a nice heavy layer of mulch over these for the winter. Got some food gardens going. This is a working garden, so, you know, I have like wood that I'm going to cut up and burn. And over here you can see that I am in the middle of digging and mulching some of my tropical plants like this alocasia, which are going to need some, uh, actually a big hefty pile of mulch over that to keep the corms alive over the winter. Um, this one, this alocasia and this salvia are my insurance policy. So um, this I'm going to take inside and pot up and just keep in my basement. This calla lily, this white giant is uh, post frost. And then I do have these cheap little cold frames, which eventually I'm gonna get nicer ones to put all the potted things in. So one of my favorite plants actually is bamboo. And yes, the running types. Um, bamboo is actually pretty easy to control. You can see here, this is a rhizome that's in the ground where I want it to be. But really all you have to do to control it is cut these rhizomes and pull them out of the ground or even just kind of cut them once here and once here so that the node can't kind of grow back together. Um, and then these will just rot in the ground. Uh, running bamboo is fantastic for breaking up clay soil and um, any compost and mulch you do put on the surface, these roots as they kind of penetrate the clay are going to take all of this kind of nice organic stuff uh, deeper into the soil profile. And as you do the rhizome pruning, you're also bound to mix some more good organic matter into the ground um, as that happens, which is uh, really only twice a year in a cold climate, colder climate like zone six. Of course, along with some of the more exotic plants, I do still have a good amount of kind of typical pretty flowering plants. Of course, Pugster Blue being one of them. Ferns in the shady areas. And then of course, these irises are all kind of going to sleep, but it's different types of gladiolas and crocosmia and Japanese iris, native iris, agapanthus, which Janie, I'm sure you're going to be uh, very familiar with agapanthus uh, being in California, but these are actually zone 6A hardy agapanthus. And, but what's cool is I've never seen the seed be good on these. So we'll see what happens with those. Also at the rear of my property, I have given over a pretty sizable area, mostly to native plants, wildlife, and it's pretty much just a wildlife area. And it all kind of started with this dogwood, which was here when I moved in. If YouTube had a resume, I did a garden tour in less than 10 minutes and I'm proud of myself.
Thank you so much, Clark. Thank you. Thank you for making that video. I really, really appreciate it. And I did just want to say the piece of advice that Clark gave to all of you zone six gardeners. He says, if you really love a plant or a type of plant, just because we live in a colder zone doesn't mean there isn't one cultivar or one species that could potentially be successful in the right microclimate. Definitely try growing what you love. You might be surprised at how successful you are. And I think we could see that with his banana, his hardy banana. I mean, that thing, <laughs> the trunk was massive. Um, so I, you know, I think that that's really, really good advice for him. And if you live in zone six, you should follow him. Uh, I want to follow him just for his aquascape installations because that's just interesting as well. So thank you so much, Clark. Again, his YouTube channel is called The Barefooted Gardener and I'll link it down below. All right, next zone six garden I have to share with you all is from Allentown, Pennsylvania. And the gardener's name is Jan. And you will all see why I had to show off Jan's garden because it's beautiful. But then also, I think I would be friends with Jan. I definitely think I would be. You'll see why in a second. So the plants that Jan says thrives in her garden are roses, nepeta, Russian sage, and dahlias. The plants she wished she could plant are things like salvia and sage because she has pretty heavy clay. Um, and so they don't do well with the clay that she has. The biggest challenge that she has for her garden, she says, every summer we have a long two month period of no rain. And even with my drip irrigation, I have to break out the good old sprinkler and I have to pay for water. I only ran drip to the rose bushes originally thinking the other drought tolerant plants would be okay. But once that clay dries out, it's as hard as a china plate. I have to be on it all the time. I could see that must be very, very frustrating to deal with the, the big swings like that. If Jan could give one piece of advice to other gardeners, she said the no dig method is a lifesaver. She says she's 64 and she couldn't have made this garden if she had to turn over the whole thing by hand. And I totally get it. And obviously the no dig method is working really well for you because your garden is beautiful. So Jan first sent a before photo. So let me show you her before photo. Uh, you can see there's just this big empty space, empty lawn, a really pretty established tree and some hedges on the side, but just kind of a big empty space. Um, then you can see this next one and Jan has done a lot of work. <laughs> if you notice, Jan, Jan might be a little bit tired after doing all the work, but she did a very good job at making those beds. So this just cracked me up when I saw it, Jan. So then here's a video she sent in of her rose garden, all completed all planted up. You can see that she has these separate beds that are connected by these rose arches and it's beautiful. It's very formal. It's very old fashioned. Um, you know, it, it's a rose garden. I love this little setup she has here with, um, I think that's Russian sage. It looks like Russian sage with uh, some super, super tunia vista bubble gum and then those spher spherical boxwoods. Beautiful. Then the, the roses in the back. Jan, you did a gorgeous job on this rose garden. It is so beautiful. You should be so proud of yourself. And I love that you had before photos and after photos. Now you can see that there's the pool behind there. Let me show you all the photo that she sent in of the pool because I think this is the neatest thing. So Jan has her formal rose garden, but then right next to that, she has this garden, this pool, tropical pool garden that is so beautiful. I want to come and I want to swim in your pool because it just looks like paradise there. Uh, you can see she has some bananas, some hibiscus, some nifofia. Uh, those look like impatiens right there. It's just the collection is gorgeous. And I just wanted to show this because I think it's a really good example that you can have different garden rooms in your garden and uh, it all doesn't have to match. Uh, so she has her rose garden that's beautiful and formal and old fashioned. And then she has this gorgeous tropical garden right next to it. But because she has that little uh, fence right there, that black fence, it separates it enough and it really just makes it look like two garden rooms. So Jan, I think you did a fabulous job. I love your garden. And I can imagine you uh, just by sending in a video or a photo of you laying on the ground. I can imagine you have a really fun personality to go to go along with your fun garden. So thank you so much for submitting, Jan. 
So next, Zon 6 Garden is similar to Bethany's at Chicago Gardener in that this is a very small garden um, and there's a lot of containers in this garden, but they're beautiful. So this is Jojo's Garden out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Look at her front porch. It is incredible. Look at everything that she has fit into that small front porch. It's just so beautiful. So she says in her container garden, she likes Supertunia Bubblegum Vista, Supertunia Vista Jazzberry, Dichondra Silver Falls, Creeping Jenny, Scavola, Whopper Begonias, Sweet Potato Vine. She says, we live in the city and so we don't have a lot of space. She loves container gardening and porch appeal. Her backyard is shaded by her neighbor's insane Kentucky coffee tree and the sunlight she does receive mid morning and late afternoon blesses her limelight hydrangea, Carl Forrester and lavender. So it's just the most pretty, pretty front porch ever. Jojo says the hardest thing in her garden are the crazy city squirrels. And so planting bulbs is a nightmare. And that scares me because I have a ton of squirrels here and I haven't tried planting bulbs yet, but I'm going to, I'm going to try. She says, I'm going to try container bulbs this year and do some lasagna planting, which is great. Let us know how that goes. The biggest challenges she faces are squirrels, lack of sunlight and soil. And if she could give one piece of advice for other zone six gardeners out there, she says, amend your clay soil, fertilize and keep up with watering. So good advice, Jolene. I do want to say that Jolene does have an Instagram, uh, but she is also a candle maker. She hand pours soy wax candles. Her candle company is called Wireback Candles, and I will link it down below. So thank you so much, Jojo, for submitting. Your front porch is beautiful. Last but not least, the next Zone 6 video I have for you all is from Katie. Katie lives in the Springfield area of Missouri, and she also has a YouTube channel as well called Sunshine Garden that I will link below. So she is Zone 6B, um, and when I asked her what the biggest challenges she has in her garden, she said Bermuda grass. Absolutely, I'm right there with you. And then she does say the one piece of advice that she would give to other gardeners in Zone 6 is to mulch, mulch, mulch. She says she agrees with me when I say that. I learned that from my master gardeners class, mulch, mulch, mulch. So let's watch Katie's video. Hello everyone. This is Katie from Sunshine Garden. This flower bed I started in September of 2021 when my husband and I bought this house. And I am growing a few different things in it, including columbine and foxglove that I grew from seed, hardy hibiscus, roses, Campanula that was also started from seed and irises. I also want to share my vegetable garden. Here I am picking spaghetti squash and melons, a watermelon called Charleston Gray. In this planting area I started last year with no dig method. I also like to grow green beans zucchini and squash, sweet and hot peppers, a lot of tomatoes, and other produce. Picture from last year with some snow. Thank you so much for sharing your garden, Katie. Your garden is beautiful and you obviously are a passionate gardener, which I appreciate. I love watching other passionate gardeners because it just inspires me as well. So I just want to say thank you to all of you who submitted your photos and your videos. I'm sorry I couldn't use them all, but again, I am keeping them. And again, I think I've said it 10 times in this video, I will link all the channels down below, the Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, what, whatever anyone has provided me. So check them out. If you're in zone six or anywhere around zone six, check them out because I think it'll be really good inspiration for those of us who garden in similar zones. So anyway, stay tuned. Zone seven is coming tomorrow. All of these videos are going to be in my Show Me Your Gardens playlist, so you can watch all of them. You'll get inspiration from every zone, I promise, because I am getting inspiration from every, every single zone. So I hope you all enjoyed this, and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.